Hello and welcome to Love My Poland. In my last episode, I discussed the first 10 points of things you have to know about Poland before visiting Poland. I had a great time putting that one together, so today we're going to cover the final 10 points, completing our two-part series. If you haven't seen the first part yet, just go down to the description below, click on the very first link you see at the top, and watch the first one first, and then continue with this one. Numbers 11 and 20 are coming right up. So let's begin with number 11. Number 11, offer tea and coffee. I will never forget inviting my first Polish friends over to my flat on a warm autumn afternoon. I went to the local supermarket, I got some snacks, and I picked up drinks. I got two two liter bottles, one Coke, one Sprite. I got some fresh orange juice, and I had both sparkling and still mineral water to drink. When everyone arrived though, they, they only wanted tea and coffee. They wanted hot drinks. I am not a hot tea guy, I never have been, and coffee has always been for me just an in the morning kind of drink. I was totally unprepared. Always keep tea and coffee in stock and have plenty of it. And you think I had learned my lesson? No. A few weeks later, some construction guys came to my flat to replace the radiators in my living room. After about 20 minutes, they came to me and they said, do you have any tea or coffee? Yeah, I forgot. Keep it in mind, here in Poland, it is customary to offer plumbers, electricians, maintenance guys, warm tea or coffee. You'll look good is the right thing to do. Number 12, staying on drinks. In one of my earlier videos, I showed you nine things you have to know before you drink with Polish people. One of those pieces of advice is when you're at a family dinner with mixed company, wait for someone, typically the host of the party, to pour your shot. Now, modern young people are rewriting the book on the drinking etiquette here, but just to be sure, there is a kind of unwritten rule in Poland that the person who pours his or her own drink may risk looking like an alcoholic. It's true. If you're in doubt, don't pour your own drink. Watch what everybody else is doing and wait for someone to serve you. Number 13, name days. If you are not Catholic, get familiar with name days. I admit it, I am horrible at remembering my wife's name day. Coming from a Protestant Baptist Christian environment back in Texas, I can honestly tell you that I had never heard of anything like a name day. Depending on the person here, their age, religious views, or maybe where they were raised, name days may have huge significance and even sometimes compete with birthdays in importance. I have learned to rely on my lovely wall calendars like this one here, the three month wall calendar, where I can circle the dates and be prepared every year. Oh, and if you're not sure, typically people have their name day on the closest name day after their birthdays. Simple, right? Number 14, staying with names for a second. In Poland, the title names of family members like brothers, sisters, aunts, and uncles, they don't always refer to blood family. A good case in point is a brother and sister duo, Maciej and Justyna, my friends. Met them years ago. It was clear that Maciej had only one sibling, Justyna but he had always referred to going to meet his brother. After a long period of confusion, I finally asked him, Maciej, what are you talking about? What brother, man? Who's your brother? Does your dad have kids from an earlier marriage or something? I mean, what, what are you not telling me? He just chuckled and said, Russ, 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 I mean my brat Czotechne. Now, back in the USA, we call this just a cousin. This is my cousin, but here, that close first cousin, they can refer to as brother and sister. And they do the same thing with aunt and uncle. This is odd. In Poland, if there is a family friend who's close to the actual family, very often they refer to that man or woman as aunt and uncle. There's absolutely no marriage relationship, no blood relationship. It takes some getting used to, but this is very common in Poland. Number 15. If I can be totally honest right now, and if I had a chance to do everything all over again before stepping on that plane and landing in Warsaw, I would have watched a few classic Polish movies and TV shows before ever arriving. The reason why is that I get asked all the time, Hey Russell, have you seen Sex Misia? Jane Schwiera? Misch? Sami Swoi? Have you seen shows like Zminnice or Alternative Cztery? No, I hadn't. If you don't watch them, you'll be just fine in Poland. But if you really want to impress your friends or family, Having a rough idea of what those shows are all about will take you a long, long way. But most importantly, it will give you a bit of very important insight on who Poles are, a little bit of what life looked like here over the last few decades, and it will help you understand the culture a little bit better. I will put a link in my description just under that first link of every little TV show and movie I mentioned so you can check it out. 
Number 16, Disco Polo. Wow, now this is one, this is a must know before arriving here. And it's really hard to sum it up, so just have a listen to this song. That was Yesta Shalona by a group called The Boys, and it is my favorite disco polo song ever. It has to be played at any party. Poles will tell you that disco polo is a kind of a choir taste, and that disco polo to Poles is kind of like country music to Americans. I'm not sure I really agree with that, but it is something that you either love or you hate. One thing that most Poles will agree on, though, is that this kind of music is a must-have at a wedding reception. A wedding reception without disco polo just isn't the same. Number 17, beware of hooligans. Poland has some pretty hardcore football or soccer fans, and they go to great lengths to support their teams here and proclaim their names throughout the country. Let's take my city of Częstochowa, for example. We have a European football team, a soccer team called Raków Częstochowa, which is located in the residential district of Raków and Częstochowa. I kid you not. If you are caught in that district wearing the wrong colors or the wrong logo of an opposing team, you may not come back the same way you entered. Hooligans are a thing here, and they do mean business. It's kind of like gang territory rules back in the USA. I love cycling through Częstochowa. We have great paths, but you know, I steer clear of Rakow every time. No joke. Now, number 18 is one I've mentioned before, twice in my videos, in fact, but I think it's worth mentioning it again. When it comes to guys greeting other guys, you know, in America, we do these strange kind of front hugs, chest to chest hugs, or we'll give a hard pat on the back and kind of rough somebody up or maul them. Polish guys, in my experience, they don't appreciate that. It's a little strange. I've received some really awkward looks in the past. And I even had one guy say, can you kind of keep your distance, man? Come on. It doesn't work here. It may be changing with a young generation, but people my age, a handshake's enough, maybe a high five if I'm feeling really brave. Number 19, let's transition over for a moment to world events and some figures from the past. Be cautious about the issue of Lech Wałęsa. Not everyone in Poland loves him. Lech Wałęsa is well known around the globe as the man, of course, instrumental in bringing down communism in Poland and showing Russia the door. I remember Lech Wałęsa's visit to Lone Star College near my home just outside Houston in 2001. I thought my history teacher from high school was going to have heart failure, a stroke from excitement as he got to sit in the front row to hear him speak. But in Poland, people are kind of divided on the matter with some people here claiming that Lech might have been a Russian agent, a secret agent of some kind who really wasn't the person we all thought he was. I don't have an opinion on that, but honestly, I don't go into that topic with Polish people. I never know what I'm going to get there, so be careful. And finally, number 20, very important. Please know the basics about three men in general, Sobieski, Puaski, and Kostuszka. Let's start with John III Sobieski, who was a Polish king that stopped the Ottoman invasion of Europe at the Battle of Vienna in 1683. What would Europe be today without Sobieski? Know this. Number two, Kazimierz Puaski. General Puaski is known as the father of the American cavalry during the Revolutionary War, and he died on the battlefield for American independence and he also famously saved George Washington's life. I kid you not, my family today, 2020, they drive to the town of Pulaski, Pulaski, Tennessee, to do their shopping. I love it. And third, be sure you know full well who Tadeusz Kostruszko was. Kostruszko was a brilliant and accomplished military architect, think West Point, New York, and a colonel in America's Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. Where would America be today without his contributions? To thank him, we have cities, towns, and roads named after Kosciuszko and Pulaski from coast to coast in America. I always get a kick out of the American pronunciation of Kosciuszko. Listen to Oprah Winfrey's pronunciation of Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Easter speech in the Kosciuszko Baptist Church at the age of three and a half was, was the beginning. A little town, apartheid town. In Kosciuszko, Mississippi, in 19... Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Our top 20 things you have to know, don't come to Poland without knowing these 20 things, is complete. 
Again, I look forward to any comments you might have. Please put them in the comments section below. If you have not become a subscriber to my channel, click the button right here on this beautiful masonry heater so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.